What is up everybody, my name is Shaq and if you're new to this channel, drop a sub if you want to see a lot more future content. So today basically what we're going to be doing is we're going to be talking about two mice in the perspective of a video editor slash photo editor. We're going to be comparing the Apple Magic Mouse here versus the MX Master right over here. And we're just going to be talking about what's the benefits of each one. So run that intro. So we're gonna start off with the Apple mouse. This mouse comes in at the price of about $100 Canadian. I'm not too sure what the American price is. It's gonna be linked down below in my description anyway, so you can take a look at it yourself. This is a very, very good looking mouse. The shape of it, the design of it, it's overall, it's very good. Minus the fact that you have um, a charging port on the bottom, but I mean, I guess they have to do it so they can actually hide it without making an ugly kind of notch. So we'll start with the pros of this mouse, the trackpad like scrolling on it. It's very, very natural feeling. You can scroll up and down without having any issues, scroll left and right. It's, it's very, very handy when you're working on a timeline and doing any kind of video editing. Even when you're doing any kind of photo editing, it's, it's very, very useful in the sense that you can scroll up and down when you're zoomed in on your picture very easily and left and right without worrying about jumping way across your timelines or your picture and stuff like that. I honestly love the way it scrolls. I At first I was kind of skeptical on this mouse, but as I use it over the course of the last week, I realized that it's actually pretty good. So right now I'm gonna talk about the cons of this mouse here. As much as I love the mouse and it's super sleek designs and how, it's, how it scrolls, it's, it's, it's cons to me kind of outweigh its benefits, but it's not gonna, it's not that bad that I wouldn't use it. The things that I kind of don't like about it would be the fact that you can't pinch and zoom on it. Yes, I know that when you're editing photos, you can hit option or alt and then scroll to zoom in and all, but when you're using this mouse, it really feels natural to just try to pinch it while you're trying to scroll left and right, you know? Pinch it like it's a, as if it was a trackpad and you'll just get that zoom on it. I believe that there are some softwares that you can download and you can program this mouse to do that. I haven't gotten around to trying it, but if, if so, then I would honestly go for this mouse. That's the biggest thing that I just didn't like about this mouse. Other than the fact that I find its sensitivity sucks. Like I, I'm moving my arm around a lot more than when I'm using my MX Master, which I've been using for the last couple months. That again is not such a big problem. The biggest drawback on this mouse is that even though its design is super sleek, its ergonomics are trash. For me personally, when I put my hand on it, I feel like I'm a giant and I have no space to kind of put my hand anywhere. But over time, you'll get used to it. So if this is a mouse you've been looking at, I would definitely pick it up. It's an amazing quality mouse. The battery life on this thing is amazing. I know it already because the Magic, the magic Keyboard is sick phenomenal battery on it and just literally I've charged it twice in all of the time I've had it maybe even once and even so when you need to charge it it charges in maybe like five minutes so people that complain about a charging design you're charging it for five minutes I'm sure you can you know put it down charge it go get a drink or something and then come back and you're good to go the last thing I have to say about this mouse is that I don't like the way it clicks in the sense that I feel like I can't be as precise on where I'm kind of hitting. There's been many times where I'm trying to click on something and for some reason I'll completely miss it, which, I mean, it doesn't happen to me as, as much as I would with my other mouse. But, like I was saying earlier, this mouse overall is an amazing mouse. I would definitely pick it up. So now we're on to the MX Master 2S. This mouse here is a little bit more expensive than the black one, just for your information. I'll be linking this down in the description below as well. To start off, the pros on this mouse, its ergonomics are absolutely wonderful. You can pair this up to three devices at one time and you can switch between them on the bottom, which is honestly just super dope. And another cool feature is when I was transferring all my stuff from my Mac, like my MacBook to my iMac, there's something called Logitech Flow. And the way that works is that you can connect this to both computers and you can use the one mouse between the two of them. So if you're someone that has two computers running and you don't wanna switch between mice, this is where I would go. The other thing about this mouse that I find extremely, extremely important is how natural the clicking feels. Whenever I'm clicking, it feels a lot more accurate and I don't know, it feels less forced to me. I don't know how to explain that better. The last pro about this mouse is the sensitivity is wonderful. You can crank it up super high or you can have it down super low because the way it works is that you'll have the sensitivity on your computer 
that you can play with. And then if you download the Logitech app, that's when you can bump it up some more. And the other cool thing is that you can program this mouse to do whatever you want with whatever you want. Like I set up the middle button to pretty much mute and unmute my music. So if I have to mute my music, I can just do it with the click of my, my, my mouse. I would say the biggest con about this mouse is these scrolling wheels. Overall, they're, they're amazing scrolling wheels, but the biggest problem to me is that they don't feel very accurate. And once I turn on the infinite scroll, it kind of feels a little bit exaggerated and a little too intense sometimes. When I'm scrolling and editing a video or anything like that, when I'm on the timeline, when I'm doing that horizontal scroll, it doesn't feel as natural as it does with the Apple mouse. Whereas with that one there, I'll literally be able to scroll precisely as much as I want to. Versus with this one here, there's been a lot of times where it just jumps way across and I'm like, what just happened? But that again, not a big problem. Something you can deal with. Just take an extra two seconds to kind of move around it. Same thing with scrolling up and down when you're on the timeline. Uh, sometimes I feel that it zooms in way too much or way too little. A little bit here and there. Same problem with that. But overall, this is an amazing mouse. Ergonomics are tons better than the Apple mouse. This fits in your hand like a glove. Well, it might just be me. I don't know. Google Home just went off. All right, everybody. So that is all for this week's Tech Tuesday. If you guys enjoyed this video and want to see more, drop a like. It really makes a difference. And subscribe if you want to see more. Like, that's the best way to know that I've uploaded another video is if you subscribe, you'll see it somewhere on your homepage. Don't know where, but it's a good way to keep track. It helps me out. It helps you find my videos if you enjoy them. And leave a comment on what you'd want to see next. If you want to see more filmmaking, photography, or if you want to see another tech review. I have a lot of stuff planned for this channel and I'm so excited to share this all with all you guys. So with all that being said, pretty much it's time for me to head out and work on the next video. So I will see you guys on Tech Tuesday or my next video or something. Yeah, peace out.